October is well known for a lot of market scares, prompting a check-in with your finances. Historically, we've had some really tough events happen in history from the Black Mondays, which created the October scare myth where the market is gonna have a lot of issues and major flaws when it comes to October. But this is also the month to prepare for opportunities and also seek to understand and help educate yourself when it comes to finances. In this video, we're gonna be looking at various financial aspects and breaking five of them down that are very important to your financial well being in this October, starting with number one, the ghost of debt. That is right, guys. Debt is just like a lingering ghost. Not all debt is equal. We're gonna look at single digit debt and double digit debt. So when you look at single digit debt, you are looking at mortgages which are under 10%, a majority of auto loans under 10%, even looking at student loans and most of the personal or unsecured debt, it is the single digit meaning 10% or less. When you look at your high interest debt, which are normally credit cards, could also be some personal loans, depending exactly where your credit score is, this is the debt you wanna focus on and these are the ghosts that you wanna exterminate through the debt elimination. Credit card debt um, is very common. We know it is kind of incredibly high when it comes to the interest. On average, it is around 25% credit card debt and it affects 61% of Americans. That's right, guys, 61% of Americans are carrying credit card debt of roughly 24%. And the medium that is almost $5,000 that they're carrying in credit card debt, which is kind of crazy. Now for this one, we have two different methods that you can combat this. One is the debt snowball method, which of course is the preferred method for majority of people psychologically. And there is also the debt avalanche method. Now this ghost of debt actually focuses on the avalanche method, which means you are gonna list your debt from the highest that you have in the interest rate to the lowest that you have in the interest rate and systematically put every single dollar into that high interest rate to eliminate that ghost as soon as you can. Number two, we look at zombie investing. That is right, guys. Some investors resemble zombies. They walk aimlessly around without a clear investment strategy. This is the time to really nail that down, guys, and know exactly what you want to. Drifting from the original investments can really lead to financial decay. The importance of solid investment strategy and risk management and mitigation as well as optimization is very important when it comes to investing. You have to go in here with a plan. Now we've talked about this before guys, you have to know exactly what goals you are looking to invest. If it's retirement, if it's short term, if it's long term, you really have to strategize your investment strategy and know exactly what you want to do. Like a seasoned zombie hunters, investors have to have the right tools and a clear plan how to hit that objective to really make it a big difference and a big impact in your life. Number three, we look at the haunted house. Now, of course, this is a scary part within the housing market because right now the challenges in the housing market are high costs, low supply, and interest rates continue to increase. That is right, guys. An average 30-year is over 8% right now. Housing supply is very, very low, yet the cost is really high. So it is truly at this point a seller's market. So a lot of people are actually staying put because essentially if you're selling in a very high cost or a high market, you have to buy in a high market. You have to have another place to go. This is really when people buckle down, they consider home improvements, um, explore refinancing, looking at ways to save money. This is also for potential buyers, have to be patient guys, have to get pre-approved. And now we're also seeing a lot where debt to income ratios are coming to effect because homes are so high and the interest rates are so high. Coupling that, a lot of people cannot afford the mortgage payment when it's looking at two or $3,000 for a home, that is roughly $500,000 depending on the market that you live in. Now the current market cycle is the seller's market guys. With a low inventory, but listings are down 26% year over year. That is right, guys. It is incredible how many people are staying put. And in my opinion, guys, a lot of people are staying put because they're locked in at the 2%, 3%, 4%. And anyone in, honestly, that doesn't have to move that is locked in at a 3% is not gonna buy someplace more expensive at an eight, eight and a half percent because the payment is going to be astronomical. Even some scenarios, we have seen payments doubled when they're moving or looking at a new property and then people just go ahead and stay tight where they are. Number four, we look at confronting the afterlife. That is right, guys. Making sure you have all of your things in order, writing a will. Will is very unsettling to do, but it is crucial. I have seen both sides of the scenario, guys, where people have a will, have a trust, and know exactly where their money is going to, what the investments are, they have beneficiaries on their account, 
And I've also seen it on the flip side where we do not have a will or a trust. We even have accounts for parents, grandparents, even kids that have no beneficiaries on them that end up in probate court or um, end up in a bunch of different places which are, which are assessed with a lot of different fees, or you have a lot of siblings, you have cousins, you have a lot of people coming out of the woodwork claiming that they have something or they are entitled to those funds, and now it ends up being a legal battle. The importance of no nominating an executor, seeking legal counsel, and regularly updating the will, guys. If there has been any major life events, you wanna go ahead and update that will, making sure that you know exactly what it is going to be, and making sure that the people that you want in charge of it is still going to be there. And also looking at the, the state laws um, to make sure, again, that everything is going to be taken care of. Make sure that your spouse, that your parents, that your children know where everything is at, guys. This includes where do you bank? Where's their life insurance? What is the insurance through? Where are the investment accounts? You have to map out everything in a will and map out everything at least fundamentally on a piece of paper, on a document, whatever it may be, so they know and not left in the dark when you do pass. And the final one, guys, is the horrors of rolling over a 401k. Now, there are a lot of companies that make 401ks very, very easy to roll over, including M1 Finance, guys. We have a link down below. It is who I recommend when it comes to that investment vehicle because your 401k or your IRA can actually be invested in the market. Now, with that being said, guys, you do not want to leave any money behind when you leave a job. So what I mean by that is the majority of people will start at a job, might be there for a couple years, start accumulating a little bit of a 401k. They leave that job. Suddenly, the 401k is left behind. This is money that you're leaving on the table because a lot of times the money will be unmanaged at that point or it will sit in the fund that you had it in when you left, regardless of it's the greatest fund in the world or the absolute worst fund in the world. It is going to sit completely unmanaged in a fund, um, essentially that if you move, if you leave your employer, a lot of times you don't even hear anything about these funds. You have to remember on your own that you still do have this money that is sitting in an investment account at XYZ Corporation and seeing also, one, how you have to get into there. I had an individual that actually had a 401k at an old employer. Old employer is out of business. Having to find down and track down that 401k took roughly about three months before we found out exactly where the money was, being able to get it all situated and getting it all pulled over and kind of consolidated into one account. It does take some time, guys, but make sure you're not leaving many behind. So in conclusion, guys, Make sure you're paying down your debt. It is very, very important that you have a strategy to eliminate that ghost of the debt. Zombie investing, that you have a plan when you come on with that. If you're looking to move, make sure, again, it might not be the best time because of the mortgage rates. Making sure that you confront the afterlife with writing that will. And then, of course, making sure that the 401k is all set and you're all good with rolling that over. So, guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And if you like the content that I provide, Please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll catch you in the next video.